Oh god! Whoa. That's a bit of a shove. Come on, we're, baby. We're both in it though. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, it's a bit slower than I expected. Come on! Come on! Oh! 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 <laughs> hey, Jacob. Oh, hey, Matt. What are we driving? today. It's a bloody Land Cruiser 70 Series. Oh, the Land Cruiser 70 Series, the facelifted Land Cruiser 70 Series. And Jacob, the question that everyone wants to know is, did, did they, they ruin, ruin it? it? Did they? Well, there's a lot of changes, including a four-cylinder engine in this thing, straight from a Hilux. It's also got new exterior designing, some new interior features, and it drives actually remarkably different to the V8, which does still sell alongside this. However, we're all gonna be a little bit sad to know and un unsurprised that this thing has gone up in price. Every bloody year. That's how we collectively feel. <laughs> So guys, we actually reported on this on our website, carsource.com, and it went viral because it was talking about the price and specs for the 2024 Toyota Land Cruiser 70 Series. If you want to check that out, we've linked that down below. But what you need to know is that this all new four cylinder, which we'll come back to, it adds about $6,000 over the outgoing V8. And if you want the V8 now, you can still get it, but it will cost you about $10,000 more than before. So this one here, the GXL 79 Series, that's going to set you back $78,800 before on-road costs. Whew. That's a mouthful. It's a lot of money for what you get. And as we said in our last video that went viral as well, yeah, this thing is a cult classic. It's literally a cult if you buy into one of these. That's not to say it's a bad thing. Don't get me wrong. I've had one myself, sold it to dad. Dad's got another one on order. My uncle has a 76 series, which is the Troopy. And I'll tell you what, I've been getting lots of looks driving this thing around all week. Yeah, people really love it. Anyway, that's a long way of me saying we're gonna talk about everything you need to know and did they ruin it with the four cylinder. So Jacob, uh, let's get into it. Let's do it. Alrighty, Jacob. I want to know from you, what do you think of the looks? I love the circular headlights. Such yeah. a cool retro look. It's genuinely a really sexy looking car. Some people hate it. Some people say that this LED ring is like an AliExpress knockoff. And I'm like, what do you mean? It looks That's sick. ridiculous. Yeah. It looks like Iron Man's heart. You know what? Haters going to hate, bro. Haters gonna hate. Haters gonna hate. I love it. They're also now LED lights. So actually quite bright white LED lights, which is good. Here Wait. <gasps> but you still get the massive bloody oh. halogen turning signal. You do, you get massive halogen turning signals. And this thing actually received a pretty uh, interesting change last year, which we'll come back to, which has to do with the turning signals. Here you've got a pretty massive grill. That's new, Toyota badge. It's kind of that heritage look. In fact, this is supposed to look a lot like the 40 series Land Cruiser, but the 40 series Land Cruiser didn't have a radar there, Jacob. This is weird, okay? This is just... In What's fact, weird? I don't like it. You. I'm going to call Toyota out on it. Up top, you'll see a camera up there. This thing does have autonomous emergency braking. In fact, that's standard now across the range. It also has lane departure warning, which again is new. However, the Land Cruiser 79 series, specifically the single cab that we have here, is by far the safest. It's the only Land Cruiser 70 series to get an updated crash frame, which, you know, it's pretty important. It's also the only version of the Land Cruiser that gets more than just two airbags. So it's got knee airbags, it's got curtain airbags. So I'm a bit disappointed that that's not extended across the range. It means that the other ones are actually not safe compared to this anyway. You gotta protect your tradies, bro. Yeah. Protect, protect your bloody tradies. Protect your tradies. You also get a new bumper here, which yes, you can stand on. It can support my weight. And I won't tell you what it is, but it's a hundred kilos. So. So yeah, man, I mean, they've changed so much. You can really see that from the front. But uh, you can let us know what you guys think down in the comment section, just below that like button. Do you like the changes that they've made for the Land Cruiser 70 series? What do you think about these lights? Why are they so bloody controversial? I don't you know? think they should be controversial, man. I think they just look good. They shouldn't. But you know what is controversial? What's under the bonnet? So why don't we talk about all the changes for this new Land Cruiser? Let's do it. Okay, so really the biggest thing about the V8 before and why people loved it is because it was so under stress. I mean, it still is because you can get it, but I reckon it's days are numbered, especially as we have all these emissions regulations coming. So should you be upset that this thing ugh, now has a four cylinder? Well, let's talk about all the changes and why this isn't necessarily just a drop in from a Hilux. Okay, so here we have a 2.8 litre four cylinder turbo diesel engine. Regular viewers of the channel will have seen it before in the Toyota Prado, Toyota Fortuna and the Toyota Hilux that we've reviewed. It doesn't have the GR Sport level of tune, so it's 150 kilowatt, 500 newton meters of torque. So it has a revised cooling system because Toyota knows that this is a smaller engine for a pretty big car. You have the introduction of a newly designed top mounted water to air intercooler for the engine. And that's why you'll notice that there is 
no hood scoop on top of the car. It's basically a big gaming PC, isn't it? Yeah, correct. You got your, your liquid cooled CPU, which is actually just your engine. And for those interested, there is still an air intercooler on top of the V8. However, air is fed through the top of the grill instead through a leather box style opening. Of course, we also get a six speed Azen sourced automatic transmission. It's a torque converter, we've seen it before, and they are very reliable. But because, of course, this thing is ginormous and it has a GVM or gross vehicle mass of 3.51 tons, it's quite literally classed as a truck. Well, as a result, they've had to do things with the transmission. So they've actually increased the oil capacity of the transmission with a larger oil pan. They've added a transmission breather with an oil catch tank for heavy duty work. They've actually replaced the cast element sump with a pressed steel unit and a redesigned oil pickup and strainer. And inside you get a button that says second start. That means that this thing will start in second gear and that is to reduce any sort of traction loss in the rear because you can't modulate that as well when you're using the automatic versus the five-speed manual you get in the V8. And you also get another button that says power haul and that optimizes the transmission for towing because yes, you can still tow three and a half ton with this thing. The 79 series single cab actually has the best payload. It's somewhere close to one 1.4 tons, I'll put it up on the screen now. That's impressive. That's pretty damn good. Yeah, so a lot of new changes. It isn't just a you know, drag and drop and leave it, that's it. They've had to make some changes to make sure that this thing is as reliable as possible. And I mean, time will tell, but this engine's been around since 2015. And apart from some DPF issues, it's actually been extremely reliable. Yeah, look, it is pretty much a proven engine at this point. Yeah, and Toyota says they've fixed that even though they're getting sued, oops. So, Jacob, let's continue with the exterior. Let's do it. Okay, so coming to the side, Jacob, you'll notice these pretty small 16-inch wheels, but some people say that this is the best for off-roading, so it's a pretty good thing. You've got Dunlop Grand Trek all-terrain tires, which they are pretty all-terrain-y. They've got a massive tread on them. Massive tread. You've also got this ooh, black scratchy plastic here. You've got the same snorkel that became standard in 2022. However, it's not waterproof, so keep that in mind. If you're actually going to do some off-roading, you'll need to change that. You have the classic classic old mirrors, Jacob, and they can blind you. <laughs> nothing has changed since the 70s. No, no, nothing has really changed at all, has it? As I said earlier, the turning signals are kind of funny, so they had to double this in size, because as I said, this thing has a 3.51 ton GVM, and so that's part of the regulations, as stepping up a class. Let's get that's it. hilarious. Double so it's the basically size. a truck indicator. Yeah, it's pretty <laughs> funny. You've got Oh, metal side steps with some rubber gripping to them. They're pretty awesome, actually. Yeah, one of the better side steps I've used. Yeah. You have a keyed entry and go using the little key here. You put it in and it's always a hullabaloo when you have to unlock the other side. If you step up to the GXL, you get central locking, Jacob. Ooh, but 21st uh, century mod cons. Yeah, not here, not here. And otherwise, the cab ends right there and we have a giant, genuine Toyota tray. Most people aren't gonna opt for this. They'll just put on their own thing. And that's kind of the, the theme with the Land Cruiser 70 series. It's extremely customizable, extremely modular. You can make it whatever you really need it to be. Uh, and no one is really gonna be putting that on, if we're being totally honest. Can you see the whole car yet? Yeah, I, I could see it quite a while ago, actually. Oh. I was just backing away for dramatic effect. Ah, the old Hitchcock effect. Anyway, Jacob, let's check out the bum. Let's do it. Alrighty, Rooster. So there's not much to talk about with the bum, which is always a good thing. Obviously, we have a huge, huge tray here. You could fit, you could fit me in there. Do you, you know? reckon you could fit a Euro Pallet in there? Oh, I reckon you could fit more than just one, maybe one and a half, Jacob. You have your full size spare there, which is really important, especially when you're adding the Nullarbor. Probably oh, want two of those, actually. Simpson Desert. Oh, Jacob, you got your three and a half ton brake towing capacity there. And although we haven't done a towing test, I'll put that out there, okay? We haven't done a towing test. Yeah, we test. don't do that here. No, we don't. Source. From what I've heard from my motoring journalist counterparts, it actually tows just as well as the V8. And in some instances, because it has more torque, it feels better. So keep that in mind. Jacob, shall we check out the interior? Let's do that. Alrighty, friend. Let's talk about the changes to the interior because surprisingly, there are actually quite a few. Yeah, I was kind of blown away when I got in here. Hmm. Before we get into that though, I, I will just explain that the reason that the four cylinder even exists in the Land Cruiser 70 series is not because consumers are asking for it, it's because fleets are asking for it. Essentially because the V8 only comes in a manual, it's quite thirsty on fuel. Fleets are actually opting for other cars and the sales of the Land Cruiser 70 series for fleets has reduced significantly. There's a lot of money in fleets. So even though this this option is for you as well. It doesn't necessarily mean it was made for you. But anyway, let's come back to the interior because this has changed across the range. First thing you'll notice is the Hilux steering wheel. It does feel pretty good in the hands. It is a plastic unit, but 
who cares? But the good thing about it is you have buttons now to control your new small digital instrument cluster in front of you. It shows a few different things. You still got your analog tachometer and also speedometer. It's styled like the 40 series Land Cruiser, which is very cool. I love the look of that, man. It looks so cool. It looks really nice. The other thing here is this infotainment display has gone from 6.1 inches, Jacob, to, you know, hold your horses. <gasps> Onto 6.7 inches. Oh my god, it's like an iPhone Pro versus an iPhone. Yeah, it's about average. So it's pretty good to use, and it now comes with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Unreal! Wow. That's a bloody loud horn. <laughs> Sounds like an angry man in Tokyo circa 1980. You know what I mean? They are both wide, but who cares? You use the little USB port here. You've got your classic air conditioning controls, they just work so well. Oh. oh my God, get blasted, bro. It's nice and powerful. The other big change is the center console because, well, there's no five-speed long manual gear shifter there, Jacob. There used to be a long rod right there. Ooh. Instead, you get a 300 series style automatic transmission. And you know what? It works well. You've got a manual mode, so you can shift it manually if you want, and it will hold the gears. You've also got a new cup holder here and a storage area for your phone, which has a little pass-through for a cable. Smart. Yeah, and it perfectly fits an iPhone 14 Pro Max. It does, it does. You've also got another cup holder here, but they say don't use it as a cup holder. You have a 12 volt socket. Weirdly, you do lose the two USB-A ports from before. Don't know why they made that decision, but anyway. So yes, yeah, so you get some really nice changes, but otherwise it's the same bloody Land Cruiser, okay? It's the same. You've got these circular air vents, little Land Cruiser badge, you've got a little grandfather clock there. Your center armrest, you can't use as a center armrest because it's too low. Inside, you have a little bit of storage that lifted up. You get actually quite a lot. Don't know why it's hidden. You have a pretty average size glove box there too. You got speakers here in the side. There's only two when you go for this dual cam. Yeah, and you know what? They're bloody hard when you hit your knee on them. Yeah, and they're also pretty terrible. So there's that. Of course, this is a proper four-wheel drive. So we have our four-wheel drive controller here, and you've also got a low-range transfer case. As standard, you get a rear locking differential, but for 1,500 bucks, you can option a front locking differential as well, and you should definitely do that, if nothing else, then for resale value. You've also got hill descent control, which actually works pretty well. And you've also got an idle up button here, and that runs the engine at a higher RPM, so it gets up to temperature quicker, because these diesels, they can take a while. You've got manual windows if you don't spec up for the GXL, you know, if you don't spend the big bucks on the top of the range, it's manual windy windows. It's old school, man. It's, it's old school. It's very old school. The other thing you'll notice is build quality. Now, if you go looking for it, everything starts to rattle a little bit, but that's actually by design, because if you have everything really tightly screwed together, over time it loosens. This is pre-loose. So they've pre-loosened it for you. They have. So it rattles and squeaks from day one. But the other thing, Jacob, is, you know, everything in here is accessible by just like a Phillips head screwdriver. And that's really the important thing about this. You can be out in the Simpson Desert and you can literally work on it yourself. Good on you, mate. The yeah. seats. Look, they're like a vinyl, uh, a strange little vinyl, and uh, they're okay. I've heard vinyls making a comeback. Oh, God. <laughs> You are full of the dad jokes today. Look, they're not very comfortable. You'll probably want to rip them out, put something else in. Again, name of the game with That's Land Cruiser. That's your prerogative yeah. with a bloody Land Cruiser. Yeah, you'll get up to that $200,000 mark pretty damn quick. And then you might as well have just bought a 300 series. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that. You can't fix a Land Cruiser 300 series. Sorry. With a Phillips head screw. I didn't know. Okay. You need an electric screwdriver for that one. Jacob, uh, let's do the test everyone wants to actually know. Let's perform this test and see, is this four cylinder actually faster than the V8? It might be. Alrighty, Daddy Jacob. Last time we launched this with the V8, we got 14.51 seconds. What are we gonna get now? 14.78. I'm probably wrong. It's You're probably gonna be wrong. faster. I reckon it's gonna be 11.59. All right, let me, let me revise my guess. Revise. 12.8. All right, fist me. Oh God, that's a bit of a shove. Come on, we're, baby. We're both in it though. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, it's a bit slower than I expected. Come on, come on. <laughs> That was the most YouTuber reaction, like overreaction I've ever seen. 10 million likes and I will release to you 10,000 Land Cruiser 79 series. The 10 millionth like gets 10,000 cars. We're comparing a $1 Land Cruiser 79 versus a $1 billion Land Cruiser 79. <laughs> this gold-plated Land Cruiser 79 series cost my dad $10 billion. Oh, we haven't even said what it is. Zero to 100 in 11 .1. One nine seconds. That is genuinely way faster. Substantially better. 
I think that's because of your poor manual shifting in the other one. Don't you just shut up. We both know it's true. All right, Daddy Jacob. Let's drive it normally. Let's drive it normally. All right, Daddy. Did they ruin it? Oh, God. <laughs> My helps put the handbrake down. Then you'll feel the extra torque. Bro, what the f***? Isn't this weird? Don't you feel weird holding onto a bloody Hilux steering wheel driving a Land Cruiser 79? It feels faster. A lot faster. It definitely does, yeah. All right, so obviously powering this beast is a 2.8 litre turbo diesel, Jacob. Where's that from? It's from a bloody Hilux. Just like that. I felt that. Unreal. You put your foot down. You can feel it. <laughs> it actually doesn't feel like that slow. So, power outputs, 150 kilowatt of power. It's down a kilowatt. One kilowatt less than the uh, That's it. V8. End of the video. Look, I mean, it's not fast. No, it's not by fast. By any stretch of the imagination. Wait, wait, we have, we have. What is that sound? That's not good. That's our little camera gear. Jacob, hold that. Okay. Torque outputs are actually substantially better. 500 newton meters of torque, torque. which is up 70 newton meters. That's oh, a our, big... our, our little friends are. Uh, oh, oh, is it not tight? Oh, there you go. Everything's rattling. Everything's rattling. Everything's moving. What's beeping now? Oh, the other thing, Jacob. Six-speed automatic transmission. It's a torque converter. Again, straight from the Hilux. Very much better than the five-speed manual that you would get with the V8. I'll tell you where I noticed that the most is on the freeway. Oh. Because I remember that five-speed would just be like droning and droning in your ear, sitting at like 2,000 RPM. It, whereas now it, it was like this. That's exactly what it was like. That's what it sounded like to me, at least. The downside to this is that it does definitely feel more talky, more fast, but it, it kind of runs out of grunt a bit quicker than the V8. That uh, is true. And the V8 as well, you can't forget that that V8 was so understressed. It has so much more potential to put out power and people tune the snot out of them and get yep. way more power and torque. It's going to be really reliable in that sense. And so people are worried, and, and fair enough, that by putting a 2.8 litre turbo diesel in here, the four cylinder, you know, it's going to be less reliable. I guess it has been less proven, but but all those same people will then argue for the reliability of the Hilux. So how can you have it both ways? <laughs> Jesus. Jacob, Jacob, Jacob. Oh. I'm entering your what postcode. Is... Bro, what are all these sounds I'm hearing everywhere? Why am I holding all the camera gear? Because <laughs> there's nowhere else to put it, okay? So I will say, with the V8, you do get a much more flat torque band. Yes. Because you do have peak torque from 1200 to 3200 RPM. Whereas with this one, you only get it from 1600 to 2800 RPM. So it's a little bit... What was that? Right? What was that vibe? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. There was a vibration. So 2500 RPM, I think. You feel a vibration go through your soul. Wait. Hang on, let's get... Oh, I feel it. Yeah, see what I mean? I feel it now too. Yeah, maybe there's something defective with this one. I was noticing that earlier this oh, week. Oh, I'm feeling a little vibration in my foot. Okay, anyway. Yeah, to be honest, it is just a much better driving experience. There is no doubt about that. It actually feels like a modern in here. I mean, yeah, and if, you, faster. if you count the steering wheel as more modern. No, no, I'm saying the driving experience is not just the interior. The interior is slightly more modern. It's a driving experience. Yeah, no, 100%. All right, friend. Okay, take a photo of me while I go up Saucy Corner. All right, bro. You ready? Okay, Saucy Corner. <laughs> you look very happy. Oh, I felt very happy. Dude, this thing is oh so God. much faster than the V8. <laughs> I'm scared. I'm uh, frankly scared. Steering is, of course, extremely light. Nothing's changed there. Oh. We never have to double cross our arms in anything other than a Land Cruiser. <laughs> I can almost feel the back wheels trailing around. It's a double cross here, I think. Oh, oh God. I can feel the back wheels just kind of trailing the front wheels, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's and that is one of the things I think people are a bit pissed off with this one is I really thought that they would widen the rear track yeah. for this one, but they haven't. They've kept it the same and that is just one of those common aftermarket upgrades that everyone seems to make. So Yeah, it's seven grand, you know, once you start yeah. adding all this stuff to it, like it gets really expensive. But on the other hand, I get it, man. They want to leave it as like a blank canvas for people to upgrade. I get it. But also just like driving this thing around, like I get that. Look at our fuel economy, 12.5 yeah. liters per 100 kilometers. You'd be lucky to get like 50 in the V8. It's a pretty thirsty engine. That is true. And on the freeway, I was getting around the 11s. You know what? It's so much easier to drive. And people love these because, you know, you can take them out in the bush and you can fix them yourself. You know, you can re-screw the mirrors if you need to. Like, it's all very easy, very simple. That is uh, true. And it's proven. It's all analog. People love that. And I get that. But don't go expecting, like, an amazing driving car. It's super loud in here. I can hear wind from every direction, including from 
under me. And me. And Jacob, a lot of wind there, big gas bag. <laughs> and the seats are just horrendous. Like you're probably gonna upgrade that too. You know, it, it, it does what it, it does what it says on the tin. It's no frills. It just it works. Yeah, I, get I just it. I, I just love how they seem to make minor upgrades every single generation, or not generation, but <laughs> version. Sub generation. <laughs> Sub generation. It's only 39 years old, I know. Jacob. <laughs> okay. But they still find a way to charge way more money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Toyota, you <f> genius. <laughs> <laughs> You've nailed it. Oh, they've nailed this formula. All right, Jacob, let's right. get into our finale thoughts. Let's do it. All righty, Jacob, final thoughts on the... Oh, sorry. You better lock it. Final Have you thoughts. the other side? <sighs> I'm not doing that. Final thoughts on the Land Cruiser 70 Series. Did they ruin it? Honestly, man, no, they didn't ruin it. They just added a new powertrain. It is more expensive, but let's be honest. You guys are so willing to pay like $200,000 to do up your Land Cruiser 70 Series. Are you really going to worry about six grand for the four cylinder or 10 grand for the V8? Like, it's a lot of money, don't get me wrong, but you seem to be willing to pay it. Exactly, and you know what? Like, with the number of commercial contracts Toyota probably have for this car, I don't think they care if you buy it or not. No, they couldn't care less because they're going to sell them anyway. The reality is the four cylinder is, is mainly for fleets, but people are actually buying them up. Dealers are already reporting that this is well exceeding the 30-70 split they thought would be for the four cylinder versus eight cylinder. You have a slightly better interior. Well, it's really nothing to write home about. And honestly, the four cylinder, it does just drive better. It's much easier to live with, even though this is already not easy to live with, so. Totally agree, man. And I think that six speed auto really makes it a lot more livable too. I just wish it was a little bit more refined because yeah. I feel like this one had a few issues with vibration and noise. And increase the bloody track width, Toyota. What is going on? 